before I go into this, yeah. uh, I want one other thing I picked up on. The, your chairman was speaking about geographical expansion. Did I hear him correctly? You did hear him correctly, yes. yes. What, what, what are you thinking uh, I, of? I think, I think his meaning was not to go outside of East Africa markets that yes. we're, we're in already. His meaning was that quite often in our markets, mm. most of our business is in the urban centres yes. and there is an opportunity to have a broader and deeper coverage mm. of the marketplace. So if I take, for instance, in, uh, in Uganda, yes. we currently cover... I think it's 18,000 outlets, which is in Kampala and the, and the biggest cities. But we've identified there's another 10,000 outlets that we don't call on. We don't send any product to, we don't send any salesmen to. So when he was talking about geographic expansion... So you're penetrating deeper into the country, yeah. are you? Yeah. Now can I go, <laughs> Charles, to the... Uh, you know, obviously Kenya's still 61% uh, contributed mm. to the revenue. You know, this is the elephant in the EABL room, isn't it, really? Um, our Tosca elephant. 3% revenue growth, but you told me if we stripped out um, Senator, we'd be at 15. Was that right? Yeah, I didn't tell you that. Yes. But what I did say was 3% revenue growth in Kenya yes. would have been 11%. 11, 11, 11% sorry. If, uh, if the Senator... Senator was taken out of the right. numbers because Senator was such a big distortion on yes. the Kenya performance. And then the other thing I noticed was uh, Tusca was flat, according to Joe, mm. which then tells me that, the, and then you, you guys were saying Guinness was a very strong performer. So ha has there been significant Guinness outperformance? Yeah, yeah. So if you, you, yeah. you look at it's actually on the outlined on the next sheet, we classify Guinness as a premium beer. Yes. And we tus classify Tusker, Serengeti, and Bell as mainstream beers. And we are seeing more rapid growth in premium than yes. we are in mainstream. I think a couple of things in there. First of all, um, there is a general shift towards premiumization. Yes. I think we're, we're a company which is good at premiumizing. And you know, if you look at the, the past history of our that performance, we've been we've been moving people up the kind of value chain. So I think we're, we're good at premium. I think that the other thing is the mainstream is a really, really big segment for us. Mm -hmm. And therefore getting a shift in, in the, the really big base is... Uh, so the is high more, base effect for Tusker. Yeah, it, it's, it's more difficult to really get it moving. If and when we get it moving though, it'll have a very significant impact on, on our overall kind of generation of performance. Uh, but but you, you were very emphatic about Guinness, uh, which by the way I yeah. tried after you yeah. made me and gave me such a fine tasting. Um, but it, it, it's, been, it's, yeah. it's been a strong standout story for you, hasn't it? Yeah. Is that the Premier League? And is that sort of yeah, got it's other, it's got other touch points? That no, it is, it's, it, <coughs> it's all of that, all of that. So our Premier League sponsorship has been working so well mm. for us. Um, Whenever I sit down on a Saturday to watch Chelsea yes. beat some other team, I, you know, that, you know, I, I love the fact that there's the Guinness ad, um, sponsorship around that. Um, so I think that's worked really well for us. But w one of the things that I'm most proud of is that the team didn't leave it at yes. sponsorship. What they did was they said, OK, let's excite consumers yes. and customers in bars yes, by yes. having some activity that's themed around that and we've had a, a, a had piece a of activity response. called the get booked campaign i won't talk you through the details but the response to it has been phenomenal yes. phenomenal but it's not only about the marketing i think you know guinness is about the heritage is about you know the you know the, what the brand means to people it's about its distinctivity mm including about how it tastes and yes. some people are initially intimidated by Guinness because it's the kind of bittersweet taste they find a little bit challenging but once they get over that initial uh, kind of taste um, barrier or concerns they can quite quickly kind of find it really delicious. And you were telling me last time that actually it's of a stronger alcoholic quotient in, in, in Africa because it used to be transported from Ireland. Yeah, so 250 years ago, 
when the Guinness family was still running the business, they decided that export was a good way of growing their business. So they used to uh, put Guinness in barrels or in bottles onto ships and ship them around the world, including to Africa and to the Far East. And uh, on the initial f shipments, they found that when it turned up, the product had spoiled yes. through the motion of the ship and the different different temperatures that the liquid was exposed to. By the time it got there, it wasn't very nice to drink. Yes. So the brewers had a look at it, and they they uh, they decided that a, a way of making the product more transportable was to increase its. Um, increase its alcoholic content mm. and the bitterness level just to make it a more stable product. So if you drink Guinness in Ireland or in the UK, you, you'll be drinking a 4.2% ABV liquid uh, yeah. with lower bitterness um, um, and lower sourness. And here, or here it's uh, I think it's 6.8 or 7.5% ABV with higher bitterness, higher sweetness, higher sourness. So um, it's yeah, broadly, it's mm. the same yes. same kind of but just proposition. It's a, I suppose it's a little bit like you know a BMW seven series yes. or a BMW three series. Yeah. You know, different engine size, yes. different kind of comfort factor, but still at its mm. heart, still the, no, the but same. Congratulations brand. on that on the Guinness story. <laughs>